All right, this is Justin Williams Savoy. So I'm continuing on in my research here. And as some of you know, kind of when I did my video on my current organization of some of my the theology books, just my uh, paperback readers editions, I spoke about how I am um, researching the time period of the Reformation, Counter-Reformation, the, uh, the uh, kind of interplay between those things, particularly my interest right now and my research is going towards Jesuit studies, but also I'm doing that um, with in view of some um, Anglicanism, which at the time, of course, would not have been called Anglicanism. We can go into a long history of the terminology of how that came about. However, um, the Church of England and um, I like to look to primary sources, and right now I'm going to look at some primary sources that are from Ignatius of Loyola. So that's where we're going to go today. And so we are going to take a look at the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Now I'm just reading broadly and deeply of many um, different sources of this. Um, and I'm always interested in Jesuit scholarship, uh, particularly um, ever since I got the books of um, um, Peter Vermigli, um, I have grown an interest. The scholar that uh, did the research and translation of many of those texts, uh, he um, was a Jesuit. <coughs> and I'm just totally fascinated with this sort of thing in general. So it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but mostly I'm doing this as a vlog and documenting my research as we go along. And I'm looking at a lot of uh, primary texts. Uh, yesterday, we looked at some stuff by Lancelot Andrews, and I'm going to continue to read um, into that, read that as well. So let's just move forward with the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, translated from the authorized Latin with extracts from the literal version and notes of the Reverend Father Rothen, Father General of the Company of Jesus by Charles Seeger, M.A., to which it is prefixed a preface by... T. A. The Right Reverend Nicholas Wiseman, D. D. Bishop of uh, Melapatamore and co-judator co co of the Midland District of England, London, Charles Dolman, 61 New Bond Street. Now, <clears throat> oh, I'm having some allergies, so excuse me. Um, and this was obtained. Um, free and in the public domain from the Internet Archive. I just downloaded this PDF. I'm looking at a lot of electronic sources. Then I'm going to go into some writings of particular Jesuits and their original language, but I'm not just studying Jesuit stuff. I'm also studying um, Anglo-Catholic stuff, um, things that um, pertain to... Um, um, well, for example, tonight I'll be um, studying a bit about... Um, Mary, the Queen of the Scots, and Elizabeth I. Um, so, just going back to source material, um, but this is more of my interest in um, Counter-Reformation. I will be looking also at the uh, Council of Trent, and I've talked about this in other videos, so I'm going to carry on with this reading. Um, it helps me a lot to read these out loud as well, so... The table of contents concerning which see the translator's advertisement. Preface to this translation by the Right Reverend N. Wiseman, D.D. Advertisement of the translator, primarily documents, mention, and the enumeration. Appropriation of the exercises by Paul III. Testimonies of the censors appointed by Pope Paul III. Advertisement to the first edition of the work. <laughs> advertisement concerning the amendations added by the authority of the edition of 1596, the prayer of Anima Christi, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, 20 annotations affording some understanding with respect to the spiritual exercises which follow the title of exercises, admonition how the opinion or proposition of another ought to be received, the first week, the principle or foundation, daily and particular examination four editions concerning the same note concerning the figure of the lines of the mark faults figure of the said lines contents general examination of the conscious concerning thought concerning word concerning deed 
a method of general examination comprehending five portions or points, the use of general confessions of, the communi of communion, the first exercise of meditation according to the three powers of the mind concerning three sins, of the preparatory prayer and two preludes at the beginning of this and all following meditations, of the three points of this meditation, of the um, um, quickly, quickly, uh, colloquy or the quicklies at the end of this and other meditations, the second exercise concerning one's own sins, the third exercise being repetition of the first and second, how a repetition is to be made, three colloquies at the end of the fourth exercise being a repetition and summing up of the third and the same colloquies. The fifth exercise concerning hell, two notes. The fifth, first concerning adding further exercises. The second concerning hours of the exercises and their number and the day. Ten additions for the better and more successful performance of the exercises. Tenth edition concerning penance. Four further observations. The second week, a contemplation to be made twice a day concerning the kingdom of Christ. Pious books to be read and end this the following weeks. First day, meditation one, concerning the incarnation, as below in the mysteries of the life of Christ. Of the preparatory prayer and of two preludes at the beginning of this and the remaining meditations. Of the three points, the persons, words, and actions, which mention the meditation begins here. Meditation two, concerning the nativity. Meditation three, being the repetition of the first second. How this repetition is to be performed, order to be absorbed in the observed in the remaining repetitions, meditation four being a repetition of the third, meditation five being the application of the senses, the foregoing, five things to be noted, second day meditations on the presentation and on the flight into Egypt with two repetitions and the application of the senses as before. Note with respect of diminishing the numbers of exercises in the day, third day on our Lord's subjection to his parents at Nazareth and on his being found by them in the example of two repetitions and the applications of the senses as before. A prelude, con prelude concerning the consideration of the two states or kinds of life. Fourth day, a meditation concerning the two standards with a threefold colloquy of great importance. The whole to be made twice and repeated twice. A meditation concerning three classes, pairs of men with the same colloquies. Note how to overcome an ill-directed inclination fifth day, a meditation concerning our Lord's journey from Nazareth to the River Jordan and concerning his baptism to be made twice and repeated twice with the application of the senses in the evening. The same three colloquies on the fourth day are to be added to each of the five exercises on this and the following days of the week. Application of the particular examination and on this and the following days of the exercises. Sixth day on our Lord's going into the desert and their staying, the plan of the fifth day being followed throughout. Seventh day on the calling of the apostles, eighth day on the Sermon of the Mount, ninth day on our Lord's walking on the watchers, tenth day on his teaching in the temple, eleventh day on the raising of Lazarus, twelfth day on the things done on the Palm Sunday, three observations, one concerning increasing or diminishing the number of mysteries of our Lord's life to be meditated on. When the consideration of elections is to be gone, concerning three modes, degrees of humility for the attainment of the last to which the above three colloquies should be frequently and earnestly used, a prelude towards making the election an introduction to the knowledge of the things to be chosen. First point, things to be chosen must of necessity be good or at least not bad. 2D, some of the changeable, most unchangeable. 3D, a bad choice of what is unchangeable, i.e., one not sincerely dedicated, directed to the glory of God is no divine vocation. Fourth, a good choice of what is changeable, i.e., one sincerely directed to the glory of God, need not be disturbed, but should rather be preserved. And note, if a bad choice of the things mutable has been made, it is expedient to correct such election, i.e. to reconsider it with a single eye to the glory of God. Contents concerning three more suitable times for making an election rightly. When the divine power so impels the will as to remove all doubt or rather all power of doubting, when the experience of the divine dealing and 
of that of the different spirits affords sufficient light when the soul is in tr a tranquil state, exercises her natural powers. Two methods of making a good election in the third of the above cases. First method consisting of six points, second method consisting of four rules and one annotation concerning amendment of reformation to be made and any one with respect to the state of life. Observation of the highest importance to all who desire to advance in spirituality. I'm also going to um, show you some of the translations that I have of um, the spiritual exercises. I used to have a really old antiquarian um, version, which was really nice. But anyways, I'm going to come back to that later. Um, so much of this is so useful for documenting things that I'm wanting to document right now for my research before I begin um, writing on some particular subjects. Uh, three additional points of great consequence towards suffering with Christ to be added to the consideration of the person's works and actions and the contemplations of this week. Note concerning the colloquies of this week's second meditation concerning the things done after the supper and in the garden. Four annotations that the second meditation is to be conducted after the plan of the first. Two repetitions of two together and the application of the senses in the evening being made. Two concerning the dimin uh, dimin of the expedient, expedient of the number of exercises to be performed in each day, that the second and sixth and the ten editions are to be uh, partially changed during the week. Four, that the particular examination is to be applied as the preceding week. Content, second day, meditations. One, on our Lord's being apprehended and taken to the house of Annas and on uh, the things done there, and two on his being taken to the house of <coughs> Cephas on the things done there, on the reputations and on the application of the senses as before. Third day, on our Lord's being taken to and on the thing, oh, that's Caiaphas there, pardon me. Third day, on the Lord's being taken to and on the things done while he was with Pilate. Two, on his being taken to and on the things done while he was with Herod. <clears throat> Fourth day, one, on his return from Herod and on part of the things done while he was with Pilate, two, on the remainder of things done while he was with Pilate, day one, on things being taken to Calvary and crucified, two, on the things done on his being taken to Calvary and crucified, two, on the things done while he was on the cross and on his death on his being taken down from the cross and on the things done up to his burial, two on his burial, on the, on the desolation of his mother, seventh day meditation, one on the whole of the passion together, two on the same, three, four, and five, instead of the repetitions and application of the senses, the body of our Lord and the sepulcher, and the solitude of his mother and disciples, to be considered as frequently as possible throughout the day. Note with respect to dividing or uniting the mysteries of the passion according as any one may wish to spend a longer or shorter period in the contemplation of it. Eight rules for rightly regulating one's food. Fourth week, first contemplation on the first day of the resurrection and first appearance. Two points, how our Lord's divinity shows itself and how he consoles his own to be added to the custom three the person's words and actions and in contemplations of this week and one or more colloquies to be made concerning the remaining contemplations and days. Four notes. One, the mysteries to be contemplated in the week and on the manner of contemplating them, also of dividing or uniting them as before. Two, of the number of the exercises which is expedient in the day of the dis distribution of the hours and what is especially to be aimed at the application of the senses Three of the number of the points of the determining them beforehand of altering certain of the ten additions. A contemplation intended to excite in us spiritual love, including two notes at the beginning and the form of the entire oblation of oneself and all that belongs to one at each point. Three methods of praying. The first method, note how to imitate our Lord or his mother in the use of senses. The second method of praying, three rules concerning it. Of the colloquy of the third method of praying, two rules concerning it. The mysteries of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ with their points. Note, whence the words of the mysteries are taken, odd why they are distributed into points. 
contents, the second week of the Annunciation, Visitation, Nativity of our Lord, Shepherds, Circumcision, Three Mages, Purification, and presenta Presentation, Flight into Egypt, Return from Egypt, of our Lord's life from 12 to 30, going up to the temple on his 12th year, Baptism, Temptation, on the Calling of the Apostles, Miracles at the Marriage, Casting out the Buyers and Sellers, First Time, Sermon on the Mount, Calming of the Tempest, Walking on the Waters, Sending Forth the Apostles, Conversion of Magdalene, Feeding of the Five Thousand, Transfiguration, Transfiguration, Raising of Lazarus, Supper at Bethany, Day of the Palms, Preaching in the Temple, for the second week of the Last Supper, Mysteries in the Garden of our Lord's being taken and brought to Annas, of the things done in the house of Caiaphas, accusation before Pilate, contents, on the transmission to Herod, return to Pilate, condemnation and crucifixion, mysteries on the cross, burial, for the fourth week of the resurrection of the first appearance, second appearance, third appearance, fourth appearance, fifth appearance, sixth appearance, seventh appearance, eighth appearance, ninth appearance, tenth appearance, eleventh appearance, twelfth appearance, thirteenth appearance, ascension, fifteen rules for the preparation of the distinguishing of the different spirits more suitable for the first week. Eight further rules useful for fuller discerning of spirits and more suitable to the second week. Seven rules to be observed and in the distribution of alms. Content six rules for the perception of distinguishing scruples. Eight rules for the think thinking with the Orthodox Church. Additional literal renderings of the Spanish autograph together with some additional notes concerning both which See the translator's advertisement. Preface to this translation. There are many books from which the reader is taught to expect much, but which perused yield him little profit. Those are few and most precious, which at first sight and on slender acquaintance seem to contain but a little, uh, but the more they are studied, the more instruction, the more solid benefit they bestow, which are like a soil that looks bare and unadorned but which contains benefit its surface rich treasures that must be digged out and drawn from the great depth. To this second class I know no book that so justly belongs as the little work here presented to the public. The word of God and his holy scriptures is beyond everything else that has been written, and this that without it is all fair and within all rich, that is perfect to the eye that looks for beauty and to the understanding that seeks for hidden wisdom. In the exercise of Saint Ignatius, on the other hand, many will no doubt will be no doubt disappointed. When for the first time they look into them, they have heard of the wonderful effects that they have produced, of innumerable convers conversions which they have wrought, on the spiritual perfection to which they have led, and they will see in the text of the work itself nothing but simplicity of form, plainness of sentiment and diction, hence often rather than explanations, germs of thought rather than development, skeletons often more than perfect form, sketches instead of pictures, no poetry, no emotions, no high-flown ideas, no enthusiastic aspirations, but maxims of eternal import in, in located with the calmness of a philosopher, the sternness truths delivered as obvious as self-demonstrating propositions, the sublimest moral lessons of the gospel, self-denial, renunciation of the world, contempt of life, perpetual continency, continency, yep, and blind obedience taught as simple virtues attainable to any Christian. And yet, throughout, there is a manifest conviction of the adequacy of the means to the end. In the writer's mind, there is nothing experimental, nothing optional, nothing left to be discovered, but to every method is laid down as certain every result reckoned on as sure. It is a plan framed for the mastermind unless we admit to a higher solution, capable of grappling with perhaps the most arduous and complicated task, and without overlooking a difficulty, and apparently without the proportionate means confident of its success. A man is presumed to enter into the course of spiritual exercises and into the course of spiritual exercises and defilement of sin, under the bondage of every passion, wedded to every worldly and selfish affection, without a method or rule of life, and to come out from them restored to virtue, full of generous and noble thoughts, self-conquering and self-ruling, 
but not self-trusting on the arduous path of the Christian life. Black and unwholesome is the muddy water that is poured into the filter, where his affections and his soul, bright, sweet, and healthful, as the stream that issues from it, they come forth. He was as dross when cast into the furnace, and as pure gold when drawn from it. Now the superficial reader of this excellent book will ask, how is this accomplished? Where is the power, the skill? Nay, perhaps he will add the machinery by which results are obtained. Which springs the great confidence of this writer in its efficacy. The answer to this question is not easy to give in the short compass of pref preface. Nor will I therefore attempt it, but perhaps a few pages of explanation on the exercises will enable the reader to discover it for himself. It must be observed then that this is a practical, not theoretical work. It is not a treatise on sin or, or on virtue. It is not a method of Christian perfection, but it contains the entire practice of perfection by making us at once conquer sin and acquire the highest virtue. The person who goes through the exercises is not instructed but is made to act, and this book will not be intelligible apart from this view. The reader will observe that it is divided into four weeks, and each of these has a specific object to advance the ex exer exercient to an additional step towards perfect virtue. If the work of each week be thoroughly done, this is actually accomplished. The first week has for its aim the cleansing of the conscience from past sin and of the affections from their future dangers. For this purpose, the soul is made to convince itself deeply of the true end of its blessing to serve God and to be saved and of the real worth of all else. This consideration has been justly called by St. Ignatius the principle or the foundation of the entire system. No limits are put to the time that may be spent upon this subject. It ought not to be left till the mind is made up, that nothing in, is worth aiming at but God and salvation, and that to all other things we must be indifferent. They are but instruments and hindrances in the acquisition of these, and accordingly they must be treated. It is clear that the person who has brought himself to this state of mind has fully prepared himself for submitting to whatever he may be required to do by God, for attaining the, his end. Upon this ground, groundwork is raised the duty of the first week. Considerations of the punishment of sin, which led us gradually to an abhorrence of it, in itself made the sinner sift and thoroughly unburthen his conscience. This fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, and thus the first agent of the great work of change, a change not perspective or mental, but real. Sin is abandoned, hate, hated, loathed, and at the conclusion of the painful task, the soul finds itself prostrate for the full, full of anxieties past remedy, but what is to be done for the future? A rule to guide us, an example to encourage us, high motives to animate us are now wanting, and the three following weeks secure us these. In the second, the life of Christ has made our model. By a series of contemplations, if it were to become familiar, let me see here, I'm going to adjust something real quick. following we secure us these. In the second, the life of Christ is made our model by a series of contemplations. Of it we become familiar with his virtues, enamored of his perfections. We learn by copying him to be obedient to God and man, meek, humble, affectionate, zealous, charitable, and forgiving. Men of only one wish and one thought, that of doing ever God's holy will alone discreet, devout, observant of every law, scrupulous, performers of every duty, 
Every meditation on these subjects shows us how to do all this and in fact makes us really do it. Still up to this point we have been dealt with kindly as the apostles were treated by their good master. He told them not not of these things that is of his sufferings at first least sorrow should fill their hearts john 16 5 and 6 the milk of consolation and encouragement must precede the strong food of patience and conformity the third week brings us to this having desired and tried to be like christ in action we are brought to wish and endeavor to be like unto him in suffering for this purpose his sacred passion becomes the engrossing subject of the exercises the soul which has been brought near him in admiration now clings to him in loving sympathy nay finds her admiration redoubled at his divine bearing and sorrow ignominy and pain having already made up her mind to be like him in all things she is not now to be scared from resemblance by the bitterness of suffering or disgrace on the contrary she wishes to suffer for him and with him for the very love's sake which made him so suffer every meditation on the passion strengthens deepens matures this feeling and renders it to a new power and affection of the soul she has become a martyr in resolution and desire she would go forth from the holy work of meditation to the re realization of her earnest desire to suffer with jesus she is prepared for mortifications for tribulations for persecutions for death for anything whereby she may be likened unto her lord and god but she must be convinced and feel that if she suffers she shall also be glorified with him and hence the fourth and concluding week raises the soul to the consideration of those glories which crowned the humiliations and sufferings of our lord as throughout he is represented to us and his blessed humanity as being our model so here are our thoughts directed to him triumphant over death but still conversing among men those now who love him that so our love may be likewise with him in holy conversation and familiar intercourse and so he may draw upon our hearts with him when he ascends to his father and is there they may ever abide where our treasure is thus have we been gradually raised from fear to love whence henceforth is the informing principle to borrow a phrase from the schools of our lives and being it is clear that if these various principles are feeling have been really infused into us if they have been worked into our hearts so as to form a part of their real practical influences we shall come from the exercises duly performed completely changed and fitted for our future course mainly indeed have experienced this they have entered into a place appointed for them like a vessel shattered by the storms bruised and crippled and useless they have come forth with every breach repaired every disfigurement removed and what is of more importance furnished with the rudder and compass sails and anchor all that can be directed and guided and pell and secure them what wonder if their songs of gratitude and joy resound along the main two things will perhaps strike the reader as drawbacks to the attainment of this object first the scantiness of matter furnished in the book for filling up the time and secondly the obvious want of a regulating and adapting power in its application for it is clear that the work of one week should be continued till its object is attained and the ex exercent ex or ex or citant is prepared for the and presence of the next these apparent wants are supplied by one essential element of a spiritual retreat for so the exercises reduced to action are popularly called direction in the catholic church no one is ever allowed to trust himself in a spiritual matter the sovereign pontiff is obliged to submit himself to the direction of another and whatever concerns his own soul the life of a good retreat is a good director of it he it is that modifies not arbitrarily but fixes the rules and the principles the order of the exercises diminishes their number and the curtails their duration he shortens and lengthens each week 
and watching the workings of grace on each one, spirit suppresses meditations or introduces additional ones. To second them, it is he who prepares materials for the exorcitant exor to meditate on, divides the subject for him into parts, suggests its applications, and leads him step by step through its, his various duties. He wards off or suppresses disturbing emotions, spiritual dryness, dejection, and scruples. He represses ever-eagerness, rashness, and enthusiasm, and regulating the balance of contingent affections, endeavors to keep all at the steady and the peaceful level, so that the grace of God may gently and as if it were a breath move and regulate every determination. Let no one think of undertaking these holy exercises without the guidance of a prudent and experienced director. It will be seen that the weeks of the exor, exor the directorium, footnote here, the directorium is a short treatise indispensable for those who direct a retreat. It was compiled for the maxims and practice of St. Ignatius and his first disciples. St. Ignatius and his first, let's see here, weeks of the exercises do not mean necessarily a period of seven days. The original duration of their performance was certainly a month, but even so, more or less time was allotted for each week's work according to the discretion of the director. Now except in every particular circumstances, the entire period is abridged to 10 days. Sometimes it is still further reduced, but even so, the form and the distribution of the exercises must be strictly kept and no anticipations or inversions must be permitted. It is impossible to make the slightest change in the respect without injury. Gladly would I enter into fully this subject and show the admirable and the beautiful chain work which connects all the exercises or meditations from the first to the last, connects them as clearly and as intimately as any series of sound mathematical propositions can be connected, but it would take a long essay to do justice to this matter. It is, however, to this logical and, and argumentative arrangement that the exercises in great measure owe their certainty of result. The mind may struggle against the first axiom or rather demonstrable truth in the series, but one satisfied of this resistance is useless. Unreasonable, the next consequence is uninvitable. Conclusions follows conclusions and the triumph is complete. The passions may entrench themselves at each step behind new works, but each position carried is a point of successful attack upon the next, and grace at length wins their very citadel. Many is the fool who has entered into the retreat to scoff and has remained to pray. Besides the regular work of the exercises, there are other matters connected with them which this volume contains. One of the most important of these is the method of election or choice of a state of life, a duty usually performed in a spiritual retreat. This is perhaps the most delicate, difficult, and even more dangerous point with which the director and his disciple have to deal. No one can study the rules laid down by St. Ignatius without admiring their prudence their sagacity and their certain power, but they require a wise and steady hand and the eye for application. It has been reported that these exercises are to be soon published as a work adopted for members of the Church of England, in this same way as other Catholic books have appeared. If so, we cannot anticipate any result but misunderstanding and fatal error from the attempt to employ them as spiritual instruments. If I left to individual application, they might only lead the soul into a maze of perplexities and bewilderment, and deprived of their adjusting power direction, giving rise to sadness and discouragement and presumption and self-will. And of this, there will be much greater danger by far than a similar use would cause in a Catholic from the want of safeguard, which a definite dogmatic teaching alone can give as well as of that aid which familiarity with ascetic principles and the ordinary use of the sacraments confer. And if, on the other hand, it is intended to put the exercises into practice under direction, we are sure that much mischief will still ensue from the absence of training and traditional rules which guide the Catholic director in his arduous duty. 
It will be the blind leading the blind to the fatal detriment of both. Bits and particles of the Catholic system cannot be thus detached with impunity and incorporated with another system. Not only is the effect of a monstrous incongruity, but it is also at once a piece of bad faith and one side of injustice to the other. So I'm going to stop here for now. I can hear my sons. It sounds like they're like fighting in the other room or something. I don't know. I'm going to have to go look into that. This is Justin Williams Savoy. Thank you so much for joining me on this beginning of some of my research and reading of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Peace.